if you are asking yourself the question, what camera should I buy to get into the hobby of toy and figurine photography, your very first camera purchase and you're not sure where to start, this video today is for you. So please do stay tuned. I have my personal recommendations and guidelines on what to look for when you're buying your first camera for toy photography. Hello everyone and welcome to X School Garnier Blog and Photography. My name is Steven and to those of you who may be watching this channel for the very first time to introduce myself, I'm a toy scale model and figurine photographer and I've been doing this for the past seven and a half years. So I'm quite familiar with the things you need when it comes to cameras. What do you need if you're looking forward to buy your first camera for toy photography in general for hobby use? Now, you don't really need to buy something expensive like this one, the one I'm using. I'll get into this in a minute. Okay, since with this comprehensive guide, there are a lot of things to cover. So I need a script right in front of me or I might miss out something. And I'm not going to give you guys a list of cameras right away on what to buy, what not to buy, because that is not helping at all. It does not explain why you... One product is better than the other when it comes to choosing a camera for toy photography purposes. Instead, I'm going to give you guys a list of technical specs, uh, technical specs or specifications that you need to watch out for when you choose a camera that is suitable for figure photography. And this specs discussion is applicable to both brand new and used cameras in case you want to go low budget yes the used market is a good place to hunt i shall discuss about that in a minute as well so yeah do remember that this guideline you're watching is specific for toy photography for scale model photography other genres of photography are not being factored in so the advice you are listening from me right here may differ from the advices you hear from other photographers who do other types of photography. Before I list out the specs that you might need, let me address a few commonly asked questions or commonly heard statements. There are six of them right here. The first question is, is a smartphone camera good enough for toy photography? Well, I do understand that a camera purchase is a major investment a lot of spending just to photograph your toys, your skill models as a hobby. But no, smartphone cameras are not suitable for toy photography. Once again, I shall emphasize specifically for toy photography, smartphone cameras are not suitable. You can go out and buy the very best smartphone camera available in the market today. An iPhone, a Samsung, a Huawei, doesn't matter. You put a grand or 1200 US dollars on a smartphone and they take amazing photos outdoors. Urban, landscape, streets, everything, they take amazing photos. But when it comes to toy photography, it is very ill-suited simply because smartphone cameras, their sensor is too small. And what happens is that when the sensor is small, the focal length of the lens is going to be very short as well. Most smartphone cameras their equivalent full frame format focal length is about 26 to 28 millimeters, which is standard wide angle. If a smartphone camera, the sensor is seven times smaller than a full frame sensor, that means the lens, the focal length have to be seven times shorter as well, which means a 28 millimeter equivalent lens on full frame is only four millimeters in your smartphone camera and with a 4mm focal length, nothing will be out of focus most of the time unless you photograph very closely to a, an object in close distance. Which is to say, you can't get enough background blur, you can't get bokeh, you can't isolate the subject. And when you can't isolate the subject, your figure, you put it in any location, outdoors or indoors, you get a very clear background and the photograph tend to look a bit rather distracting unless you are very careful with composition. So in short, your photos doesn't look as good even though you try your very best with a smartphone simply because there is too much depth of field, 
not enough background blur. So the sensor size and the conse and consequently the focal length of the lens which is too short has something to do with it. Point number two, the statement, gear does not matter, is it true or false? Depending on who you ask, one photographer will say that you don't need something too expensive to take good photos. And then you ask another photographer, they will say that you need the most expensive gear so that you're not being held back by a gear. You can do whatever you want. So expensive cameras are better. So which argument is correct? The answer is both are true and false because this is common sense. It depends on the genre of photography you are doing. If you are shooting sports and wildlife, yes, you need very fast burst rates, you need a very good long range lens and that is very expensive. You need a camera that can withstand abuse, rain, sand, dust and so on. So those cameras, they are high end, they are expensive. But if you are photographing toys, skill models, doesn't matter whether it is indoors or outdoors, these are static objects, they are not moving, they are not going to run away from you. Even if your camera is a very slow piece of crap, 3 frames per second for example, it does not matter. It is irrelevant. So you need to buy the tools that are suitable for the kind of workflow you are doing. And in this case for toy photography, they are not a very demanding kind of photography. So gear does not matter in toy photography. Question number three, how much can I expect to spend on toy photography in general? Now, if we are looking into brand new cameras, for example, and a uh, decent entry-level camera, they are around in the ballpark of US $600 plus minus US $600. That is the amount you can expect to spend for a decent entry-level camera. Of course, if you don't have $600 to burn, feel free to check out used camera market. Used cameras, they are excellent because when you buy a used camera, what happens is that they don't depreciate as much. For example, if you buy a brand new camera or lens for $600 and you sell it two years later, you're going to sell it for $400 bucks maybe. But if you bought a two-year-old camera for $400, $450 in the first place and you sell it, Two years later, you can still sell it for $350 to $400. So that is less depreciation. You lose less money when you buy a used camera. I'm afraid that I might end up buying the wrong camera and I will have buyer's remorse. Alright, the good news for all of you is that every single camera model that is sold as brand new in the camera market at the moment, all of them are so good that you can't really go wrong with any of them. Doesn't matter what brand. And even at the lowest point at the entry level of about US 500 to 600 US dollars, these cameras are so good and all of them are actually usable for photography, for toy photography. They are more than good enough. But one camera may be better than the other just for very small reasons, which I will elaborate in the technical specifications part later on. So don't worry about buying the wrong camera when you are going for something brand new. Number two is that if you are buying something used, do not buy something that is too old. You can go for something that is two to three years old. Check out that camera model. When is the release date? A simple Google search will give you the answer. Three or four years old model, perfectly fine. Five year old model is the borderline. Don't buy any older than that. Question number six, do I need additional lenses or the kit lens is good enough? So when you buy a brand new camera, usually you will take it as a kit set with the stock lens that comes with the camera body. We call it the kit lens, usually 18 to 55 millimeters or 16 to 50 mm, around that range for the kit lens. Now kit lenses, they are a very good start. They are very versatile. They can be used for pretty much any genres of photography, maybe except for birding or for spots where you need extreme reach which means they are perfectly fine for figurine photography, no problems at all. You can always buy additional lenses later, which I do recommend. And regarding additional lenses, that is an, a complete different topic altogether. Another long topic, I shall save that for a future video. 
buying additional lenses are definitely recommended if you can afford them but otherwise the kit lens is a very good start don't worry about that how many megapixels do i need now every camera available in the market at the moment they have more than enough megapixels for your personal needs for social media purposes for example you are going to take photos and just upload them online and share it with everyone else in case you didn't know on facebook instagram your maximum width of height of the image is about 2000 or 2048 pixels and if you combine the height and width of your photos uploaded to facebook after they resize them that is only about four to five megapixels so if your camera has 16 or 20 megapixels that is already more than enough unless you like copying your images which i do not suggest you to do so learn to frame and compose your photos properly frame your shots perfectly as much as possible so that you don't end up copying doing editing should i buy dslr or mirrorless camera the answer is fairly simple if you are going for something brand new buy a mirrorless right away forget about dslrs because mirrorless cameras are where the technology is nowadays the latest technology and they are a lot more user friendly to newbies in photography those who have never used a dedicated camera before using a mirrorless camera in case you are not aware of they feel like using a smartphone camera so it feels very approachable very relatable and you won't feel demotivated because it is difficult to learn photography mirrorless cameras make it easy to learn photography so you are more willing to learn more willing to take up the hobby that is the advantage you don't feel demotivated dslrs they are on their way out they might go extinct in about 10 years maybe canon and nikon they have stopped almost stopped making brand new dslr models they are focusing all of their r d money on developing mirrorless camera models the ones you see sony making so that's one thing to know about however if you are at a limited budget you can't afford something that is brand new for 700 600 dollars and you want to buy something used this is where a dslr is a better purchase because there are a lot of affordable used dslrs in the market and lenses for dslrs they are also a lot cheaper than mirrorless lenses of course unless you buy cheap manofocus mirrorless lenses from chinese brands that is a difficult different topic altogether but those are manual lenses we are looking for autofocus lenses dslr lenses overall they are quite a lot cheaper especially in the used market and there are a lot of them in the used market simply because existing dslr users they are selling off their gear to upgrade to mirrorless and that is where you should take advantage of if you are willing to learn to use a dslr because dslr has a learning curve in some way this thing right here where you see people look through this is the optical viewfinder in a mirrorless camera it is digital but in dslrs they are optical and there is a learning curve on how to use them effectively and accurately but if you are able to master an optical viewfinder in a dslr it makes you a much better photographer overall compared to people who only know how to use a mirrorless camera it is a bit like being able to drive a manual transmission car as well and not only automatics something like that so yeah it's better to know more okay so now that i'm done with answering or responding to the eight most commonly asked questions or statements i shall move on to the technical specifications which you will need to watch out for when you're buying your first camera now this applies both to brand new and used cameras all right the very first criteria is to buy an interchangeable lens body for versatility purposes so when you buy a brand new camera please just forget about cameras with fixed lenses sony rx100 series cameras for example these are compact cameras with a fixed lens in front they are ideal for travel photography or for vlogging but not at all for toy photography please do not waste your money on those buy a camera where you can change lenses which means a mirrorless camera or a dslr because 
being able to change lenses to capture different perspectives is the most valuable thing about buying a dedicated camera in the first place. Alright, and then specs number two. This is perhaps the most important one, but most people overlook this. Real screen resolution. Yes, I'm talking about the screen on the back of a camera. The resolution of that screen, very important, but most people overlook this on a technical spec sheet. The thing with toy photography, you are going to shoot in live view a lot, which, which means you're going to shooting on the back screen. You're not going to use the viewfinder. You just look at the screen and with the camera on the tripod. And the reason why the screen is so important in terms of resolution is that you will be checking whether your photos are in focus or not by zooming in on the image. If the screen resolution is too low to begin with, when you zoom in to check your photos, the image you are seeing is very blurry. So what's the point? You wanted to check your photos, but you can't even check it because the image isn't clear, thanks to a bad screen on the back. So make sure you buy something with a good screen on the back. And as a general guideline, the bare minimum you should looking for is 900k dots and above. 900,000 dots. This is the general guidelines. The good news is most cameras in the market today which are being sold as brand new. New cameras, all right, new models, all of them have a minimum of 900,000 dots. So if you're buying something new, I guess you do not have to worry at all. This is, con this is concerning used camera. For example, you come across a used Sony A5000 for very cheap maybe 250 US dollars. And to be fair, that is a very decent camera for toy photography. But the real screen is only 400,000 plus dots. So that is a very bad screen. Sony in general, they have a reputation, a track record of putting very bad screens on the cameras. I have no idea why. Even the Sony A7 Mark III, which is a 2000 US dollar, camera when it first came out, it had only 900k dots for the back screen. The third spec is to buy a camera with a flip out or an articulated screen. Now with this Nikon D850 of mine, this is only a flip screen, which means it only flips up or flips down. It does not come out to the side. So this is not ideal for figure photography to be honest, because sometimes when you go outdoors, you're going to shoot figures on the ground, low on the ground, in portrait. And you'll be going very low like this, but the screen does not flip out. So you're going to struggle trying to lie on the ground just to look at the screen. This is a trade-off I was willing to make when I purchased this camera, but this is not ideal at all. Ideally, you will need something where the screen can flip out to the side so that you can use it very low on the ground. And the good news is a fully articulated screen, which means you can flip out or up and down any way you want, they are a lot more common in lower end and entry level cameras. For example, Canon M50, once again, or Fujifilm X-A7, fully articulated screen. In contrast, a Sony A6400, very popular camera, it only flips up and down as well. So if your camera is screen can flip out, flip out to the side, it is a much better choice in general. The third spec that you might need to look out for is hot shoe. Now this attachment up here, this metal part up here, this is called the hot shoe. It allows you to attach a camera flash on it. Now the camera hot shoe is something I would say optional. So if you don't plan on learning how to use an external flash, most figure photographers, they don't use flash, they use steady lights, lamps. So I would say that not many people use flash and if you don't plan on learning flash, then the hot shoe is optional. You can even buy a Canon M200, which is only US $500 approximately, including the lens, one of the cheapest high quality mirrorless cameras in the market. But the screen only flips up and down, yes. So there are trade-offs to be made. And then the next spec that you might need, APS-C sized sensor, which is to say crop sensor. Now with interchangeable lens cameras nowadays, there are three main sensor size. The mo three most common size, micro four thirds, 
APS-C and full frame. And then there are the niche ones like medium format. We're not going to get into those. So <clears throat> what I can say is that buying, if, uh, if you're buying Canon, Sony or Nikon or Fujifilm, for example, the four most well-known camera brands, you are 100% safe. You don't have to worry. You don't have to think anything about the sensor size. However, I would say stay away from Panasonic and Olympus because their cameras, they are micro four thirds in terms of sensor size, which is smaller than usual. And I'm not saying these cameras are bad. Panasonic cameras are the best, one of the best when it comes to videos. A lot of professional filmmakers use them. But for photography, I would say not so much because of the smaller sensor. So stay away from micro four thirds. Olympus is already dead, half dead, right? They are, they are on their way out. They are not doing well. I think the, camp the company is almost kind of bankrupt, I think. And then one thing you need to watch out for is the histogram. This is the last one. Okay, histogram, it tells you whether your photos are well exposed or not, whether it is too dark or too bright. How to read a uh, histogram? Of course, the tutorial, there are plenty of it online. Learn how to read a histogram. And a histogram is present in every mirrorless camera nowadays. It's just that if you're buying a used DSLR and a rather old model, you might not be able to find a histogram feature. So this is one thing to bear in mind. All right, and now we are done with the specs you need, which surprisingly is very few, right? Not many things to watch out for, and most of them are, include, are about the back screen. So this is the good news about choosing a camera for toy photography, it is not very demanding. You just have to focus on the screen, on the back of the camera. Alright, however, before I move on to recommending cameras, I would like to list out a list of specs that you do not need. Don't listen to what other YouTubers say. Number one, do not blow your budget on features that you do not need. So nowadays, cameras are very expensive and their prices can be attributed to video specs it does 4k 60p 120p or how many frames per second whatever all these video specs they are irrelevant don't pay huge amounts of money for those things you don't use number two frames per second as i mentioned earlier you don't shoot spots or wildlife you don't need 10 15 frames per second it does not matter if your camera does not burst shoot fast enough number three battery grip so Many cameras, you can buy an optional battery grip, grip for it, but not every camera model support a functional battery grip. And a lot of professionals, they will be dissing on the camera or criticizing it if there is no support for a vertical grip. But a vertical grip is something you do not need for toy photography. In fact, it is detrimental to toy photography. It gets in the way of your work, especially when you are photographing outdoors low on the ground if you have a battery grip at the bottom of your camera, you can't go low enough on the ground. It is just getting in the way, so don't buy a battery grip, even if your camera supports it. The next thing you don't need, two card slots. Yeah, forget about what other professional photographers say, what other YouTubers say. You don't need two card slots. One card slot is enough. Two card slots is only necessary for those who do professional work, like wedding photographers. They need a backup in case one memory card goes corrupt. They don't lose their clients' photos. For toy photography, one memory card is enough. Full stop. And then the last one, this is highly dependent on you. IBIS, short for in-body image stabilization. So IBIS means that there is stabilizer inside the camera body itself on the sensor. So you can shoot handheld at very slow shutter speeds and most likely you won't get handshake blur or camera shake blur as they call it in layman's terms. So in short, the stabilization system is not in the camera lens, it is inside the camera body. This is dependent on what you need, what you plan to do with your camera when you buy one. If you are shooting figures only or for hobby purposes, IBIS is something you don't need, don't pay for one even though a lot of people recommend it. And from my past experience, my other camera, the one filming me, that is a Nikon Z6. It does have IBIS, but I found IBIS to be 
not useful at all for photography in general because when you're photographing objects like figurines, you will be on a tripod. Your camera is already stabilized. And in fact, when your camera is stabilized on a tripod, you would better turn off the stabilization system in the camera body or in the lens or both so that you don't get unwanted effects. If you're shooting handheld, for example, you're taking photographs of people, in order to freeze people so that they, you don't get motion blur, you need a high shutter speed anyway, so IBIS is kind of pointless when you're taking photographs of people. You need high shutter speed so that the person you're photographing in the portrait session do not become blurry. Just because your camera is stabilized, it does not mean that your subject does not move, right? Especially in the case of shooting people on the street or in the portrait session. Now that I'm done with the list of technical specs that you do not need before I end this video, naturally, a list of camera recommendations from me. We shall start off by listing out camera brands one by one. I shall start with Canon. Canon M200, the smallest and lightest of the bunch among all the cameras I'm about to suggest, and also the cheapest at about US 500, including the kit lens. It is so small that it can even fit in your jacket pocket, and the image coming out of this camera is excellent. However, the screen only flips up at, and to the front, and it does not have a hot shoe, so you can't put an external flash on it, one thing to watch out. Canon M50 and M50 Mark II, the original M50 is the best selling camera in the world. For very obvious reasons, it can do almost anything. So this is the safest purchase. If you really don't know how to decide and you want to play it safe, this is one of the safest choices out there, M50. Not to mention it comes with an EVF, electronic viewfinder, which the M200 does not have. Of course, the screen is high quality and it flips out to the side, making it ideal for figure photography. The M50 Mark II, to be honest, it is not really a good purchase because it is exactly the same camera as M50 inside out except for software related to video. So now it boils down to price. If you can find M50 and M50 Mark II at a very similar price range, then go for the Mark II. If the price gap is too big, just buy the original M50. The M50 Mark II is not worth your money. For DSLRs from Canon, I can recommend the 800D or the 80D. Both have flip out screens, very good screens. And these two are very good cameras overall. They can do a lot of things. 90D is expensive and I don't recommend it either because 90D is just an 80D with more megapixels for a lot more money. So I would say not necessary. And then if you look at the Canon 200D or 200D Mark II and 250D, I think they are the same camera, 200D Mark II and the 250D, they are the same camera known as the Canon SL2, SL3 in the US. Not good purchases because even though they have a flip out screen, a high quality flip out screen, the problem is that the viewfinder up here, the autofocus system is very primitive, very old and outdated. So I don't really recommend it. It is a nine point autofocus system. Just don't buy it for photography. For photography, if you want a DSLR, 800D or 80D, and those two are a bit pricey. 800 US dollars and above, yeah. Now that we are done with Canon, Nikon for mirrorless, there is only one model in the crop sensor market, the Z50. A very good do-it-all camera, very fast burst speed as well, but expensive, 850 US dollars. And the screen flips down, which is kind of dumb because, I mean, if you're vlogging and you use a tripod or handheld handle and the tripod is going to block the screen unless you use an adapter to connect the tripod to the side, which is kind of dumb. So the Nikon Z50, it is a good camera for both video and photography, but for figure photography, usable, not the best choice, unfortunately. Personally, I love Nikon. That's why I'm still using Nikon today. I have two Nikon cameras because they are grips. The ergonomics, they feel fantastic in the hand and feels very intuitive. This is why I use Nikon. That's the main reason. Nikon DSLRs. D3000, D5000, D7000 series, not a good purchase. They are about to be phased out. 
In fact, the 3000 and 5000 series, they are already discontinued in Japan. So you are pretty much buying old stock. So don't buy them brand new. But feel free to buy them in the used market. They are very good cameras. This photo of mine, all these photos you are looking at, yes, all of these, they are shot with Nikon D5200, which is about an 8-year-old camera today. So they are very capable cameras, just that I don't suggest buying them brand new because they are on their way out. They are being phased out, right? And then we move on to Sony. Sony, you have the A6100 and 6400. Both are almost the same camera. Their difference is mainly in video specs. I won't elaborate too much. And the EVF, the viewfinder, the 6400 is much better in that regard. The 6100's viewfinder is hot garbage. So you have to ask yourself, do you need an EVF or not? If you don't think you'll need it, you'll be shooting figures on the back screen only. Yeah, the A6100 is sufficient. Both cameras only have a flip up to the front screen, they don't flip to the side. Sony A6000 already discontinued, but if you can find it for US$500 new or lower in the used market, a fairly good purchase. A6300 also discontinued long ago, but in my opinion, not really a good purchase if you were to buy a used one today because it is overvalued. The A6300 was Sony's most popular camera back then and it still is today so the value is too high in the used market it still fetches us 700 dollars used i would say forget about buying that used for 700 bucks you'll just add another 150 bucks on top and go for a6400 or just settle for the canon m50 you can't go wrong with that and then lastly sony a5000 series already discontinued long ago Please stay away from them, even in the used market, because as I mentioned earlier, their screen are garbage, very low resolution, you won't enjoy using live view on it. So forget about the 5000 series, no matter how cheap it is. And lastly, Fujifilm. If you asked me to recommend Fujifilm two years ago, I would have said, no, don't buy Fuji, their lenses are too expensive. But now in year 2021, things have changed quite a bit. You can find relatively more affordable lenses for Fuji right now. They have the XC35mm, only US $200, a recommended second lens for any Fuji owner. And there's a third party Chinese brand called Viewtrox. They are making really nice, really sharp prime lenses for Fujifilm as well. I won't go more into lenses, that is a separate topic. So for Fujifilm, I can recommend the XA7, about 600 US dollars. It has a very nice flip out screen, great for figure photography. Or you can go for the XT20, but the XT20, the screen only flips up and down. Fujifilm XA3 for 300 US dollars, XA5 for 400 US dollars. If you can avoid these two models from Fujifilm because the user interface, the user experience overall, it is very sluggish, very laggy. It feels like using a very slow Android phone. So if you can't avoid those two and raise your budget a bit for the XA7 at the minimum. Panasonic and Olympus, as I mentioned much earlier, don't buy them unless you want to do video. Small sensor size, which means not that great of an image quality, simple as that. And then about used cameras, used DSLRs especially, if you buy something that is about 2 to 4 years old, you are pretty much good with any single model out there, especially Canon. I would highly recommend Canon because used Canon DSLRs, there are a lot of affordable ones in the market with a flip out screen. As long as you start from the Canon 600D and above, 650D, 700D, so from the 600D and above, you get a fully articulated flip out screen for not a lot of money. Also, there are a lot of cheap, affordable and high quality lenses in the used market for Sony, for Canon DSLRs. So yeah, you should check them out. If you notice, all of the cameras I listed out so far, it is like reading out a camera catalog because it is what it is. Almost every camera nowadays, they are so good, you really can't go wrong with any of them 
what you are choosing depends on what you feel is suitable for you. It needs to be intuitive and user-friendly to you so that you are more eager to use it every time you pick up the camera. I guess that is about it for the camera recommendations. So if you do find this guideline extremely helpful, please do consider dropping down a like and subscribe to this channel. I will be reviewing another figurine in my next video and probably a small photography tutorial behind the scenes maybe depends on which video gets done first. Yeah, so thank you very much for watching this video. I shall see you guys again. Goodbye.